Hey everyone, Matt Thomas here. I want to do a quick follow-up video regarding having fun in the classroom. Now, before you go, dude, we've heard this already. Like, no, this will be slightly new stuff. I'm going to talk about your amygdala and your students' amygdalas. So I'm going to talk about that really quickly. So um, remember when learning was fun? You know, back in kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. Like, it was fun. Um, fourth grade, to me, was when it stopped being fun. Like, that was the, the year when, like, dude, this is actually getting serious. And, it, you know, nothing but learning, right? And nothing but, like, structured tests. And there wasn't a lot of fun involved with it. And I do remember the Scholastic Book Fair, if you guys remember that, like when it would come to town and, and we'd have like an order form and want our parents to buy all the books on there. That was fun, right? That was when learning was fun. And I think most of us as teachers, I'm presuming we're teachers because we have a love of learning. and We want to share that with our students. Um, so let's talk about the amygdala. So the amygdala is the part of the brain that regulates emotions and encodes memories. And it's it's so important because um, essentially when we're taking in the sensory information, the, the amygdala help us like helps us encode it into memory. If the amygdala is overactive or stressed or anxious, new mem new new information can't pass through it. It's called the uh, the amygdala effective filter. And there's a really cool uh, uh, quote there. I won't read it all, but there's a great quote and a great link there, which essentially says if our students are stressed and the and uh, or or uh, um, over anxious. They can't learn the new information that we're trying to teach them. So the best way ultimately for our students to learn is to have an, an experience that's free of intimidation and allows them a place where they just, they're just having, they're having fun learning, right? Because if they're stressed and they're anxious and they're in that situation of, uh, they, they literally can't learn. Like the, the, they, the information will not pass through the amygdala effective filter. And so I put on the screen here, there's a bunch of quotes and a bunch of links to articles that you can read if you'd like, really good articles. But let me tell you how this came about. So my daughter and I, one of the things we like to do when we're, you know, when we're done playing and running around, we like to watch science videos just on YouTube, little five minute, 10 minute science videos. And I linked the one that we watched to the slideshow. And a few days ago, we were watching one that had to do with magnets. It was kids science magnets or 30 magnet exper you know, experiments that someone can do. And so here's this five-year-old girl sitting on this couch watching going, ooh, magnets. And here's her 46-year-old dad, me, watching going, ooh, magnets. And it was fun, and we learned a lot. And no, I didn't give her a test to make sure she learned the stuff. And no, it probably didn't connect to the, to the core content standards that she has in kindergarten. But she learned a lot. And I know she learned because she was having fun. She was taking that information in. It was a stress-free environment, so I know that her brain learned it. And so when we think about that, like, our, we're, we want to create lifelong learners, right? And the way we do that is to have fun with them. And so well, how do we do this as teachers? Because we all have structure we have to, to do. We all have a curriculum we have to do. Here's what I would suggest. Take one day a month and do something completely fun that doesn't take too much forced effort to perform. And what I mean by forced effort, it doesn't take effort for the students to have to pay attention. Like they're, they're paying attention because they're having fun and it has to be content driven. Don't do an arm wrestling tournament in class. I don't mean that. I mean, literally, you know, content driven stuff. So if I were a science teacher, maybe I would just spend the day doing magnet experiments. Like seriously, watch that video and, 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 and do some magnet experiments. And I, I, I didn't tell you, as soon as I finished watching the video, my wife and I, or sorry, my wife, my daughter and I went to Amazon and bought a bunch of magnets to do all those experiments. So seriously, if I were a science teacher, I would set up 10 stations, each with a bunch of magnet experiments and, you know, get them in groups of three or whatever. And every five minutes rotate to different stations. It's going to be loud. It's going to be chaotic. There's going to be tons of learning going on. And no, you don't have to assess their learning at the end of this, right? Make it fun. You know that they're going to be learning because they're going to be having a blast. and They're going to be talking about it. And I'm going to be hearing it from them when they come to my class and go, dude, Mr. Thomas, it was so much fun in science class. And so once a month, no matter what uh, 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 subject you teach, take a day where you're just going to like break from the structured core curriculum that you have and just like, all right, let's, we're going to, we're just going to have a blast and, 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 you know, create a lesson around the subject you're teaching where they don't have to focus so much, where it's that love of learning, um, where's the experimenting going on. Um, and, and we're, you know, keep that long lifelong learning, uh, um, joy going. Right. So, um, that's it. Thank you.